Okay, YouTube, this is my Honda 300EX. Something is wrong with the carburetor because it does not accelerate to its fullest. You can start hearing it bog when you accelerate hard. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it and check it out. Okay, well, all the screws are off now. There were, there was one right here. There you can see that. Um, another one right there. And then on the bottom, right here, there was one right here holding the frame right here. And then one right here, same side, opposite. Um, and then you have to remove these two right here. And then remove the gas cap. Take this off. And there's three more down here. Now keep all your stuff organized you should actually end up with more screws than this but and it should just come off open up from here Just a little twisting Hopefully you have two hands to do this. I only have one. Okay. So I have to hold this camera. Okay. Next thing is you remove the gas tank. Okay, so the tank only has uh, two bolts on either side and in order to remove these you just this is a 12 millimeter I believe and down here we're gonna take the tank off there's actually let me see if I can get a view of it oh it's up here you see it? there's a hook and when you move the tank it hooks in here <coughs> Um, I highly recommend you do this with an empty tank. My tank isn't empty, so put it closed right here in the center, both sides. And then we'll remove the tank. Okay, I got the tank off. Um, got bad news though. I broke the line down here, but I should have an extra one. You can see that. Phone doesn't like to focus. Yeah, you can see it there. Well, this is a line that you have to disconnect from the valve on the tank. I put the cap back on so it wouldn't splash, but you don't have to. There's the line. There's the tank. Right. Next is removing the carburetor. So the first thing you're going to do is remove this and this. Oh, you can see this. Let me see if you get a good view on it here. Right there, but you can't really see it. I'm pretty sure you can find it. Just loosen it up. Make sure not to make it fall out. Okay, that's loose, and this one too. They both look the same. Again, sorry, I'm trying to control the camera and... Okay. There. It's loose. Now the carburetor can be removed. On both ends, it'll come out. Okay. I believe this is the drain, throttle, I don't know what this is, gas for sure, okay. Yep. Okay, so next you're going to remove the throttle cable, which you can hear that there, is this one. You're going to remove these two screws.
Okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna remove this cable from here. As you can see, that's the throttle cable. So, all you gotta do is spin this, hold it like that. I could get a right angle. Okay, just grab it and lift it out. Then let it spin back. There you go. Removed. Okay, well, once you got this loose, then just let it be because apparently these instructions suck. Now, all you gotta do is remove these other ones first. It could be drain plugs, vacuum, I doubt they're vacuum, but if you remove them, I can get them to come off. Let me go ahead and get a flat. Okay, let's see if I can get it off. Oh, way to make me look like a wimp screwdriver. Okay. Once they're off, make sure you know where they go. Shouldn't be that hard. They all go kind of in a general area. Okay. This one was on this side. This one was over here. Okay. I don't know where in the world the lock on this one went. I have to look for it. Alright. Now you can just spin this off. There you go. Now go take it to your workbench and disassemble. Okay, once you got everything out, put this on your workbench. Put something nice to work on. You do not want this to get dirty with anything. You need this to be clean. Okay, make sure you have all your screwdrivers ready and make sure this, again, stays clean. All right, we're gonna start by removing the accelerator pump right here. Again, working with one hand. Okay, remove the cover. This does have a spring. Hold on. This isn't supposed to be coming out like this. Okay, one second. Okay, right here. Okay. So there's the spring you have to remove. And then the diaphragm right here. I can get this to come out. Let's see, maybe I'm doing something wrong here. I'm not reading the instructions correctly. Okay, so this is here. Check the shaft for straightness and the diaphragm for pin holes or other damage. Yeah. This looks perfectly fine to me. See? Do an inspection really quick. Yep. Okay. So the accelerator pump checks out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and
Well, the instructions don't say whether to leave this open or not, so I went ahead and cleaned it and I'm going to put it back on. Notice here that you do have to align these and press them in, these two holes, because I think it's gas that comes out of there. So I align those, put the screw, the spring back on, and put the cover back on. And that should make it work fine again. Okay, that has seated correctly. Now I'm just going to go ahead and seal this. Try to do it evenly so that I don't get more pressure on some spots than other. Don't want to leak or something. Oops, fail. Okay, once that's done, tighten it. Don't strip it just enough. I don't even know how much enough is, but do my best okay next is going to be the throttle valve so you take off this bronze color looking thing so I'll try to do it sideways so I can get Remember, I'll keep organized and don't make a mess. Okay, so it, it basically just wants us to remove the whole assembly here. So, let's get to it. Okay, well, I'm going to be extremely careful with this one, so I'm not going to record me removing it. It's a very important screw, you can tell. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove it, and I'll show you once it's done. Okay, I got it like right before it stripped, so we're good. As long as we don't have to do this again. Okay, there was a washer right here. It fell in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate these two. Remove the arm right here. Okay, well after you remove this uh, screw right here, the arm set screw. I already went through this, so I'm not going to go ahead and do it again, but you just pull the spring right here. It's actually the spring, that thing. To remove it from the bottom one, you have to, let me see, let me get a screwdriver. I can find one. Okay. So what you have to do is push the spring down and out. So you push this down and as you're pushing it down you're pulling out. So you do it like that and you're pushing this little object out. 
once you have that out you should be able to pull this arm all the way around and pull this out and all you're doing is inspecting that needle inside there you can see it here it's just a little needle that is going to come all the way out and what you're going to do is make sure it's not worn out or just make sure it's in good condition not folded bent or anything like that and if it is you need to replace that Okay, you put it back together the same way. You should figure out how this mechanism works. You just push them both in and they lock together. Put it down. Okay. Once you're done, just put this, align it and put the screw on. You might want to take this cover off to mess with the adjustment on this. Okay, once you got this screw back on and the whole mechanism is working correctly, so push back down. Just put the cap back on and screw it do it by hand first don't do it by any sort of drill or anything because you're risking stripping anything and you do not want to strip something in the carburetor once you have everything in by hand you can go ahead and use your screwdriver and tighten it Okay, so I got this all closed up. Up next for checking is the float chamber. We're getting to the goods. I have an issue with the jets, and from what I can tell, there's somewhere in here. Now, in order to remove this, you need to open up just a few screws, not all of them, just four. This one right here, around the other side, I pre-loosened them, so you guys know this was not this easy. So once we got all four of them out, you will see the floaty that controls the fuel, I believe, to the chamber. Give me one second if I can do this. My goal is just to check the jets make sure they're not clogged for whatever reason and if possible maybe I'll replace them now that I know how to do this a little quicker okay this originally was stuck what I did is I got a flat head screwdriver very very flat as flat as I could find just get it in a corner and hit it till it comes out it just pops off and this right here it just come off like that. It's stuck right here, but this should come off and stay there. And then you just slip this off, put it upward so that the floaty doesn't get in the way. And you see, I just dropped it. Okay, make sure everything's good, and then put this back in there. This part goes facing up, the fatter part, thicker. I think. <laughs> Okay, and that should do it for this. Hmm, interesting. I'm gonna have some air in there, watch. Okay. Now, this is the floaty. Keep track of how this was. The longer piece was on this side. The fatter one, I'll say. And the, the two thinner ones go between this. Okay. I'll go ahead and put that down. And the assembly seems to be all intact. Let me see. You can see that there. See the camo focus. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there it goes. It's going up, in and up, so it allows the flow, I believe. Let me open this up. It doesn't really affect anything in here. Okay. Oh. This one has a little paint right through there. Right there. So with that one, 
All you have to do is push it through. Okay, well, from what I can see, mine floaties are not removable. So, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that. I believe this is an adjustment right here. Let me see if I can focus in on it. Let me see if my camera can do it. Nope, too far. Let me scoot out a little. There you go. You can see the adjustment right there. So this one under this little floaty thing. Yeah, that's the adjustment for this. Well, okay. This here, according to the instructions, are the jets. This one and this one. Um, if I am not mistaken, this is the slow jet and this is the fast, I mean the main jet. Don't know how true that is, but I'm not sure on this one because the instructions look a little different. Either way, all I'm doing is checking them. I haven't tuned anything. This is the pilot screw, by the way. This one you have to tune later. I'll show you how to do this one. Um, what you're going to do, this was actually really hard to take off, and I didn't have the right socket size. So I just used pliers. Just be careful not to damage it. Just grab it on the top end and turn. So I got them off. You got to take both one off at a time, and this is a lock screw. I want to loosen this before getting this, but I managed to take it off without doing that. So, probably should have read the instructions a little more. Well, here are the jets. You can barely see. Let me see if I can get it to focus. So you can see them. There you go. Um, they look very, very clean. So maybe for that last one on the bottom, but I don't know. And seems like you can see right through it. That was perfectly clear. Now this top one, same thing. Check that one. They both look clear of any junk. Um, Instructions actually say to blow all jets and carburetor passages with compressed air. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, just in case you're curious, the jet goes in here. This mystifies this as best as it can. And this is what allows it to go into the carburetor. So this little thing is actually controlled with your throttle. So this is where your throttle would be on this side. You guys remember this? So when you pull that... You can see it go down and up, down. Yeah. So, that's that. You can tell. Now, for the compressed air, just get a regular air compressor. Let me see. Pause the video really quick. Okay, so I've actually gone ahead and blown it out already, so make sure not to damage this pin. Okay, once you got it on there, put the last one on. And then just tighten. I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom one. Please do not damage yours. I'm not responsible for anything you do to yours. I am responsible for mine. That's about it. And then try to align it. Why not? Yeah, that's the best. There you go. Now, do the next one. Hopefully it fits. Yep. Now you just spin this one out. It's not that easy, though. There's something blocking it. Okay, well, 
This was a total fail. Okay. Let's see if you can see that. That's the other screw that I was supposed to repair. Well, you can't really see it here. Wish you could, but the camera won't work. There you go, you can kind of see it there, it's stripped. It's stripping. So, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that one alone. Cross my fingers, that's not the problem. Because everything else is checked out, unfortunately, this probably is going to be the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and do this pilot screw. So, with this pilot screw, you have to turn it in and count the number of times it's turned. So, I recommend you use black tape or something not maybe not black tape but permanent marker and mark your screwdriver and count how many times it turns well mine only turned half of a turn back i don't know if that's normal or not but see, it comes back and not even the full turn before it stops so mine was just half a turn and yours might be more something seems wrong with mine seeing as how it says just to start you need to do two and a half well Remember that, it's half a turn back. And inspect this right here. A little drain plug, I mean not the drain plug, the pilot screw. Make sure there's no damage done to it. This one actually looks pretty bad. For some reason, it may just be dried up oil or whatnot. Do a thing will focus. There it goes. So you can see there's quite a bit of damage. Looks like it, but might not be. It's black on the end for some reason. Well, let me go ahead and clean it out a little and. Plug it back in. Oh, look at the gasket. It's old. I think I have one of these. Oh. Once you're done, do all these steps in reverse order to put everything back together. Okay, that's a look into the pilot screw chamber. And after looking up what it is, it's what basically controls the flow of the jets right here. So, this is very important. I'm guessing this chamber has to be clean, but I don't read anywhere that it has to be compressed. So, I'm going to go ahead and put a new gasket on this sucker right here. And then plug it back in, see what it sounds like. Okay. Once you're done, just put these things back on there. And put the cover back on. Oh, I need to clean this. Hopefully this isn't anything too important. Hopefully. But, like I said, we can only hope. Now, this part on the corner, if you remember, sits right there. I believe that's the accelerator. Something pump, I don't know. Apparently everything checked out, but I went ahead and did a cleaning either way. Okay, now put screws on. I put a new gasket too. You'll be able to see it. Probably not, but it's right there. I happen to have a box of gaskets. So. Hopefully, you don't end up with more screws than you thought. Hopefully you don't end up with any and you put them all where they go, but one can only dream. <laughs> okay, and we just tidied it. And 
That's the second time I almost dropped my phone. Make sure you do a good job hiding it. Whenever you tighten and tighten like you do your tires, that way you don't bust gaskets or you get even seals. Okay. I'll show you guys what I'm going to do to seal this. Well, I've done a full inspection of this thing already, and unfortunately, I was hoping the jets were what was wrong, maybe one clogged or something, but I blew it out anyways, and at least now I know how the carburetor works. And I broke something. You guys may have noticed. I kind of pointed it out earlier. This is the inlet for the gasoline. So, here's my solution. I'm not going to go out and buy a one of those hoses charge you a nut for no reason um, I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, high temperature epoxy it's worked out perfect for everything I need to do so I'm just going to mix a little bit on it's just a little thing I need to fix and put the cap back on and uh, okay and just mix it evenly. Nasty as it looks. I'm using a Q tip. It works best when you put things in places. Well, it says it cures under water. Cool. I don't think we're gonna need it. Hopefully, there's no reaction with the gasoline, but I'm not gonna put it right next to the gasoline. Plus, it dries. I highly doubt it is. It's for automotive. I got it at O'Reilly's. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't fix my problem, but it seems strange.